Hello, I'm continuing my reviews on the Godzilla series with Godzilla vs. Hedorah, the 11th film in the Godzilla franchise. Now, this came out in 1971 in Japan, but it was released in the U.S. in 1972 under the title Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster. Now, Godzilla vs. Hedorah was co-written and directed by... I know I'm going to butcher at least this director's first name, but it's Yoshimishu Bano. Now, with this movie, Bano brought a very fresh and unique take to the Godzilla franchise, while also returning it to the political and social commentary of the original film. Now, this movie is nowhere near as dark or as serious as the original film was. Actually, this movie is pretty goofy, but like the original film, this movie does have a political political message. Whereas the original Godzilla was making a statement about the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki at the end of World War II and of the dangers of nuclear testing, Godzilla vs. Hedora is very much making a statement about pollution. The movie has a very strong but also very heavy-handed environmental message. Now, I mentioned in my review of Godzilla's Revenge that you could definitely see the influence of the Gamera movies on that film. I would say you see the Gamera influence even more so in this movie. Because Godzilla is an outright superhero in this one. No longer is he a horrifying metaphor for atomic destruction, nor is he an anti-hero this time around. This time he's actually a defender of the Earth. And this whole deal of Godzilla being a superhero really set the stage for the rest of the Shoha Godzilla films. Now, Godzilla vs. Hedorah is one of the most insane films in the franchise, and depending on who you ask, this is either one of the best or one of the worst Godzilla movies. But whether you love or hate this movie, I don't think anybody can deny that this is one of the most unique Godzilla films. Like, this is an almost everything but the kitchen sink kind of movie. It's a kaiju film, it's a children's film, it's a horror film, it's a political satire, it's a psychedelic surrealist film, it's an experimental film, as well as an hour and a half PSA on pollution. Like, it really is a lot more than just a Godzilla movie. Now, all that being said, this is not one of my personal favorite films in the franchise. I do have to be in a specific mood to watch this one, but I do have tremendous respect for this one, simply because it is so unique and different. Now, the plot of Godzilla vs. Hedorah is an alien life form that feeds on pollution, comes to Earth on a meteor, and because there's so much garbage and human waste in the ocean, it's able to feed on this and constantly grow and mutate. Eventually, this creature makes landfall, and it omits this gas that could actually dissolve a human being. And because there's so much pollution in the world, this thing can constantly feed and constantly omit this gas, and could potentially destroy all life on Earth. So, now mankind's only hope is Godzilla, a former enemy of mankind turned defender of the Earth. Now, the two main characters of the movie are this little boy and his father, who's a scientist, who's the first one to discover exactly what Hedora is. Now, what the little boy seems to know a lot more about the monsters than any of the adult characters do, another influence of the Gamera movies, which is ironic considering that Gamera was a ripoff of Godzilla. But in the movie, the little boy seems to have a psychic connection to Godzilla that's never really explained. Now, even though this movie, like pretty much all the Godzilla movies at this point, was intended for children, it's surprisingly graphic with people being dissolved by Hedorah. And the final battle between Godzilla and Hedorah is actually pretty gross, with Hedorah basically literally shitting all over Godzilla. And without giving too much away, the battle between the two monsters does get surprisingly gory. The movie is also notable for its psychedelic imagery, including a scene where a minor character is at a bar and either he took some LSD or somebody spiked his drink with something, but he starts hallucinating that everybody at the bar are fish. The movie also has these animated sequences that are actually pretty well done. The movie also frequently cuts to all these images of people screaming about what Hedorah is doing to Japan, including an image of a baby 
trapped in Hedora's sludge, which is actually kind of a horrifying image if you stop to think about it. The movie also has one of the stupidest moments in the entire Godzilla franchise, where Godzilla actually flies. I shit you not, he uses his atomic breath to propel himself in the air and fly. Now, as silly as the movie is, Hedora is actually a pretty horrifying villain when you stop to think about it. And of all of Godzilla's opponents, he's one where you could totally believe that he could destroy the human race. Like, he's constantly changing and growing and evolving, and he could potentially grow to be even bigger than Godzilla. He can also split apart into multiple heteras. He's a really unique kaiju. But yeah, Godzilla vs. Adora is definitely one of the weirdest Godzilla movies. And again, I do have to be in a specific mood to watch this one, but I do appreciate this movie a lot. And as goofy as the movie is, it does have a serious social message about pollution that in today's day and age where we're learning so much more about climate change, in a lot of ways this movie is almost more relevant today than it was back in the 70s. Now, Bano wanted to do a direct sequel to this, but at the time, this did not go over too well, especially with, of all people, Tomoki Tunaka, who was the producer of all these Godzilla movies. Now, at the time, he was in the hospital during the production of the movies, so he really couldn't oversee the production, but when he finally saw the movie, apparently he was absolutely pissed, and even went as far to say that Bano ruined Godzilla. And Tanaka swore that Bano would never direct another Godzilla movie, which is why it's kind of ironic that Bano would go on to be one of the executive producers for the 2014 Godzilla film. Now, while this movie might not have been well-received at the time, it has gone to a cult following, and Hedorah ended up making an appearance in the 2004 Godzilla film, Godzilla Final Wars. Now, before I end this video, I want to cut to my friend Christian Feliciano giving his thoughts on Godzilla vs. Adora. When it comes to environmentalist messages, I would think that the last figure you would use to get that message across would be Godzilla. Because not only does this creature destroy cities every time he goes to save the world, not only can he step on thousands of people just by putting his foot down on the earth, but he also shoots atomic power out of his mouth. He probably makes thousands of people just mutate by looking at him. To me, that does not make sense to use him as a symbol of environmentalist, you know, messages. Like I don't know, I don't know how they thought that was cool. Like, oh yeah, let's let's stop polluting the earth by throwing plastic in the water, but let's just have atomic breath destroy all destroy us all instead like that's pretty much what they're saying anyway i digress godzilla versus hetero um i love this film it's great it's really really strange and when i say strange i mean it's like dr strange like it's just like whoa you're like yo it's kind of trippy because this just goes a little weird sometimes but I really enjoy it. It's a really fun film. It's really good. Um, and it is cool because it is trippy. And because, you know, it does have a really interesting creature. This creature that's made out of pollution. That's what it is. It's a big smog monster. He kind of looks like that smog Pokemon that I can't remember. Is it Grimer? In, in, in Pokemon, you know, the, that sewage creature. It kind of looks like that. And that's what Godzilla has to fight this time. And it's that's interesting to me. That was cool. That was very creative. Um, very fun. It's a very, um, like I said, it's a very strange film. I won't spoil why it's trippy and stuff. Just watch it and check it out and you'll see what, what I'm talking about. But overall, yeah, I really enjoy this film. It's really, really fun. Really cool villain. Uh, definitely, definitely, you know, above Godzilla's Revenge, because Godzilla's Revenge is just a piece of shit, which is ironic because this film has a shit monster as the villain. So, that's irony for you. But okay, and uh, yeah, thank you so much, and bye-bye. Uh, 
So, I hope you enjoyed Christian's take on this movie, and I hope you enjoyed this video overall. That was my review on Godzilla vs. Adora, a.k.a. Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster, and bye.